Hey everyone, today we are taking a look at a library from Cinematic Alpha. This one is called Deus Ex Machina and created from the Rhizomatic Plasmonic Synthesizer. Try and say that a few times when you've had a, a couple of swift ones. Cinematic Alpha is a one-man show run by Andrew Fly who's crafted a really superb sounding library. Inspired by the soundscapes of Hans Zimmer and Dave Arnold, this library is aimed at the cinematic and video game composer. It offers ethereal strings, immersive soundscapes and vibrant plucks. In essence, a full toolkit to shape that cinematic sound. You'll need 12 gigabytes of disk space to be able to play these 120 sound sources with 176 combinations and 70 multis. 16 gig of RAM is recommended for this library, which is out now priced at $149.90. So let's listen to some of the sounds from this library.
now that we've had a bit of a play through some of these sounds, we've uh, going to take a little tour through the interface and we've got two layers to play with in these uh, this library. We've got the area one and area two. Now the sound source can be selected by losing little, little toggle left and right buttons or as you just saw then click on the name and you get a whole list of the sound sources that we can play with. We then have this energize button which gives sort of like a um, LFO stuttery effect so if this is what it sounds like without now with now it's probably better going to be with if I put a, a long sounding on so we get this and then we can change the type of LFO to sort of like square let's go for something triangle and then we can change the beat of it so we get eighth notes instead now each side's independent so we could actually set this one to a faster beating than the uh, other layer so we get this So we've got a nice interesting effect there. We can then control the volume and clearly the pan here. We then have the ADSI envelope to shape your sound so the attack decaying sustain release portion of, of the, of the uh, sound source. So if you want a smoother attack all you need to do is just change this. Just put these ups, up a bit and then it'll gradually come in, <coughs> come in now. on the filter so it's opposed to this now if we increase these it'll be called more prominent so we've got let's turn these up a bit right now if I turn the attack up turn the decay down a bit on each one and wang the release up full and we get this now So we've changed our sound slightly. Now I want to go back to the sort of like a plucky type sound. Uh, Pink Tinks I think is a plucky sound. Let's go, uh, we know guitar is going to be plucky. All right, so we've got a guitar there. So if I click on this FX ARP layer, we end up in the another screen that allows us to add some effects to this. So we've got a delay which can clearly hear is on. We then can add some crush to this sound. Lower the bit rate. Add some phase if you want to. We've got an equalizer there which is just basically drag and well click and drag the bit that you want to change it's a three band equalizer so you've got your bass end there mid and then your treble we then have a rotary speaker some chorus well, of course, it's already on. Bit of spooky, whatever that is, we'll soon find out. Oh, it's like a, a Vox box. Then we've got some reverb. We then, last but no means least, have the arpeggiator section, which does what an arpeggiator should do. We can then say, well, I want to up that to 16th notes. I don't want to go too fast. There we go. And if you want to miss out steps, you can. 
just turn those down and we get this and then you've got a latch button as well so basically I'll just play an E minor chord and take my hands off the keys then we can different modes you can do as played up down up down random so if I do what was on as played and then um, let's do it this way So see how the sequence adapts to the way I play those notes there. So that's the user interface. Before we move on, I almost forgot one little thing. That wonderful little spinning cube in the middle. Listen to what it does to the sound. So yeah, it adds a full on distortion to the, the sound here. So if we put on and say the guitar and bring it on, we get this. So a full on distortion engine. Not only that, but if you move your modulation wheel, when you find the modulation pedal, you see that suddenly becomes brighter on round the edge. If I just turn it off, you see that it goes round like that. Now this is what it does to the sound. It introduces a bit of FM to the sound. It feels like a bit of pitch bend at the same time. Quite a cool little addition there. Now, this video would not be complete if we didn't take these sounds for a spin and hear what they sound like in a musical context. All the sounds you hear are from this beautiful sounding library. There are no external effects and all I have done is panned some of the sounds and sort of like leveled up off ever so slightly in the volume. And that's the mix area, absolutely nothing extra on there. So, sit back and let's take a listen. So there we go, a little composition just using sounds from this library. What we start off is some unsettling pads at the beginning and this is created by using the mod wheel um, and it gives that little sort of 
uneasiness effect. So we'll use two pads, Paradoxis and Warp. Then listen to Warp. So with them pan, it gives that nice thick sound. We then have the pads themselves, although most of this library and this composition uses pad sounds. These I actually used as pads. And we have Dream Quant Dreamy Quantum. Let's get the word right there. And we mix that with another pad, Neon Intimate. So we've got two different chord sequences going on there. These first eight bars do one chord sequence. The next eight bars do a slightly different chord sequence just to keep that ear entertained as we listen to the, to the track. We then have some lead sounds. Now, these are actually pads, but they work really well as leads. If you do that slow melody, it work nicely. So we're already building a bit of a story, a bit of atmosphere. Now to give this a bit of an ambient quality, we put this little sequence together using uh, an effect called Stepic. And all that does is, is just create uh, some uh, sequenced patterns, notes, sends MIDI messages. It doesn't create any sound on its own. So what I did is I used that to drive Dark Centrum, which is the patch from this library. And we get this. Now to add that cinematic quality, we then played with some drum loops to have this. As we get to the second half, we sort of pick things up a bit and I add a second sequence. I'll just mute that one actually. And this is just a very straight up and down arpeggiation. And there's nothing sort of mysterious about this. This is Harp Universe. And if we mix that with the actual sequence, we get this. Sort of a track all on its own, really. And when we get to the second half, we really kick up the drums by bringing in a second loop. So 
there we go, a little simple score using just the sounds from this library. Deus Ex Machina. The name just invokes that sci-fi soundscape quality. The slow moving pads are plentiful in this library and help set an instant atmosphere. Although they're labelled as pads, just never be afraid to experiment with these sounds. Try and use them for something else, like drones or like we've just experienced in the composition, can use them as leads, you know, like slow moving ambient leads. So, you know, I think the key there is don't use it as what it says on the tank tin. You know, try and stand out from the crowd. Use it for something different in your, in, in your compositions. There's a sort of like kind of granular quality to these sounds that provide a unique sonic experience. Uh, sort of like wraps you up like, in a, like a warm blanket. And if you are looking for a cinematic library that has wads, and I mean absolute wads of potential to create unique sounding soundscapes, just put this one on your shopping list. I hope you enjoy this video and remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on the music news, reviews, tips and tricks from this channel. I've put a link to Deus Ex in the description below. In the meantime, stay creative, stay sonic. I'll catch you in the next one.